Hi guys, I'm back again. This is uh, chapter 6. I know we haven't talked about it in class just yet, but uh, I thought while you're preparing for your sack, you might like to have some of this um, to be thinking about. So, chapter 6. Repeat some of the stuff we've already talked about, so I'll, I'll scan past those more quickly. But, detecting, responding, what environment factors we might be trying to detect, uh, the signaling molecules used, what sort of receptors are used, Signal transduction as a pathway, coordinating the responses, and we also need to consider plants, and plants quite commonly occur on your exam, so you can't ignore them, and neither you should. That's being a bit of a botanist myself. Um, anyway, <clears throat> and I'll just pause this because someone's going to come in the room again. Oh, I've lost the slideshow. There we go. So some of these slides, I just had a look at them, I thought, wow, I've written too much on them, haven't I? But anyway, we've talked about this. We Organisms need to detect changes in their environment, analyse those changes and determine whether they need to respond or not. And obviously the more highly evolved the organism, <clears throat> the more capable they are of analysing that information and making decisions. And they're making decisions based on prior experiences. So of course we have wonderful big brains that allow us to remember things. And so that memory and learning allow us to remember how we responded last time and whether that was successful or not. Or, in fact, if we need to adjust what we did last time and do a better job. So, we talked about it a few times. I've got my fingers up again. There they are. Look at my fingers. We need... Oops, it's not working. I'm too close. There we are. Um, we need water. We need nutrients. We need to be able to exchange gases. We need to get rid of wastes. We need to be able to replicate ourselves and replicate um, ourselves. And also we need to sense and respond to our environment. And that sensing and responding to our environment is about maintaining all those needs. So of course, the ones we study most commonly are you know, blood glucose level, um, water regulation, temperature regulation, regulation of blood pH, regulation of oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. So those ones we look at a lot because of course they are about maintaining homeostasis for a, a body, for a living organism. Um, but there are other things as well. So signal transduction, as a, a principle, requires a stimulus to have been responded to. And you're going to get that sort of question on your exam paper. What is signal transduction? You need to make sure you've included the idea of a stimulus and the idea of a response and the fact that a message has been sent from one cell to another to achieve that response to the stimulus. Um, and there are essentially five principles to communication. A signal is produced. So you know, your mobile phone does the same thing. The signal is detected. Somebody else's mobile phone answers. The signal is transferred until it reaches its target. So the person actually answers the cell. You know, the phone's phone rung, they pick it up. The response is made. You've had the conversation. And the signal is switched off after the response is made. So you turn your phones off. Exactly the same thing. Um, and we've seen the same thing with cells. So instead of communication, we often have a signaling molecule that is then received by a protein on the surface of a cell. Then within the cell we see these intracellular signaling proteins creating a response. That response then finds the target protein on this next cell and on it goes. And as you can see there's also opportunities at each stage to switch it off. And often that switch off is by an enzyme being produced to actually break down the signaling molecule. And we've talked about that with the uh, neurotransmitters. And that's a question that's appeared in the exam a bit recently, is that idea that once the neurotransmitter has been used, you do need an enzyme to break it down so it doesn't get used, it doesn't keep sending its message. Some of the enzymes, in fact, some pathways, in fact, um, take up the transmitter and put it back into the original axon ending for reuse, so recycle and reuse it. Others just destroy the, the signal. And it's got a pathways there. So what sort of receptors are we talking about? Well, you know, way back in year seven, you would have started talking about the idea of our sense organs. So clearly we have chemoreceptors, such as the lines of our nose and, and mouth for chemicals. But we also have chemoreceptors throughout our body, looking at oxygen, carbon dioxide, glucose, ions, pH, everything. You know. We have mechanoreceptors. So these are our ears in some cases, as well as um, sensors in our, our skin and our hands that allow us to feel to collect sound information, to feel touch, pressure, gravity, remain balanced. Um, our photoreceptors, of course, are external. They're about light. 
and so we receive information about light and decide how to respond to that. We have thermoreceptors externally, so we're sensing our environment externally, so we know whether it's getting cold or hot, and we, what we need to do to respond to that, but we also then need to, um, to respond to our internal temperature. And it's interesting enough, we also pick up things like pain and electric fields and magnetic fields, and some people are more attuned than others to those, like all the sensors. Um, okay, so you use, use those sort of things. And you'll see there's some names for those. NOSA receptors uh, sense pain, they've got their own little names. We don't need to worry about those too much. Um, so communication. So as we saw in the video we watched yesterday, for a signal molecule that is water soluble and therefore not lipid soluble, that means it means the proteins are that way, you need a receptor site or receptor location on the cell membrane. So the signal has to arrive at the cell, find the correct specific receptor, specific is one of those words I love on your exam, and send off a transduction pathway within the cell, which may well in include um, nucleus and the expression of DNA and protein synthesis and you know, generally will if you're making some new thing. So for example, if a signaling molecule was to arrive at um, the better cells of the pancreas, then it would cause the DNA to make new insulin and release it. However, we do know that in fact that signal is uh, a nerve cell setting off that pathway. So some of these things, of course, um, bind together. Um, and we also looked at the fact that some of these signal molecules are indeed um, lipid soluble, so they'll pass through the uh, membrane and find their target within the cytosol of the cell. Clearly, well, we talked about nervous, the nervous system, but the central nervous system is about coordination. And for us, it's about memory and learning, so we know how to respond next time. But in many simpler organisms, it's just simply a response, and so they coordinate how the body responds to it, how, which muscles are used, so that sort of thing. Uh, we've done nervous system, so I'll just quickly remind you, we've got the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, um, and clearly the higher evolved the animal is, the more uh, evolved their nervous system is. Um, we have sensory nerves, so sensory nerves will travel from receptor sites, bring information into the central nervous system. The motor neurons take impulses from the central nervous system back to the effector cells like muscles and glands and in between that we have interneurons and, and these connected neurons so there's a little pathway of neurons that uh, determine how to well move the information around determine how to respond to it we have done this before uh, i might jump this little slide because we have actually talked about the, uh, the nerves reasonably well and we talked about these uh, parts of the nerve on friday the big thing to probably talk about is the synapse or the synaptic cleft, or synaptic gap, gap as some people call it. And so we've got a space between the two nerves. So we've got an axon on one side, a dendrite on the other. The axon releases neurotransmitters into that space. They find the receptor, correct receptor site on the dendrite and pass the information along, and the message continues. Interestingly enough, the glial cells that wrap around that synaptic space are capable of interfering with that process. And a lot of um, interesting study goes on at the moment at the flurry into how glial cells may be involved in things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, schizophrenia, all sorts of interesting things. Um, but that's not in your exam, so I'll just put that there out there for now. Um, now, I do a really bad job of explaining soy bananas, but um, I, we will watch Mr. Bozeman or Mr. Anderson's Bozeman biology uh, video next week on the nervous system because he does electron the um, action potential really well with great graphics but essentially a nerve a electrical pa uh, energy passes down the axon and that's passed down by uh, three potassium ions changing place with two sodium ions across the membrane and that that's the action potential it actually travels down the neuron and takes the information with it um, we'll do that in more detail next week Plants, or oh, animals and plants both use chemical messengers. We used to talk about the fact that uh, human um, proteins and hormones were more specific than plant ones, and plant ones are more general, but we're finding that even our hormones tend to work together and are less specific than we thought. Uh, there's plenty of different types of hormones involved in the system, and we've talked about this as well already when we're looking at Chapter 5. 
and we looked at these uh, range of organs within the body that uh, are involved in the production of um, of hormones for different purposes and there's a hypothalamus controlling the whole process in the brain that lovely a great connection into the central nervous system so these hormones are, are connected right in to our response to um, to stimuli um, and of course we've got a nice little thing it's, it's about regulating water and blood but it's also um, about fetal development uh, controlling menstruation in females controlling the estrous cycle it's all controlled by these um, hormones in response to other uh, environmental cues so my quolls are about to breed soon the response to them to start their annual estrus is the first chill of winter which is interesting isn't it um anyway. plant hormones we haven't talked much about plants yet we'll do a little experiment with plants uh next week there are a range of hormones with plants um there are auxins which are found in the growing tips of plants and they, they tend to be involved in a great deal uh, they obviously uh, positive phototropism in the response to uh, to light they're also found in roots and they show positive geotropism in the response to gravity uh, we talk about apical dominance we'll talk about that next week there's cyokinins and these are found in shoots and develop um, roots and fruits as well you've got gibberellins involved in plant growth um, abscisic acid which tends to be involved in the closing and opening of stomata and cell death with um, leaf fruit and limb drop and ethylene which also stimulates the abscission zone in aging leaves causing them to fall off and uh, is responsible for controlling the flowering plants and the ripening of mature fruit. Um, so plants are also controlled a lot by hormones, and they have to respond to a variety of factors. And we talk about light, and we talk about photoperiod. So those plants that lose their leaves when the light starts to shorten in the year are uh, responding to photoperiod. We talk about the growth towards the source of light, so phototropism, that's positive phototropism. Um, growth away from the source of light would be negative phototropism. In gravity, we see roots growing towards the source of gravity, so positive geotropism, but the shoot shows negative geotropism. It doesn't show positive phototropism because it's buried in the soil, it's not exposed to light, it's actually growing away from gravity. We see phygmotropism in those plants that like to climb over other things, um, and, and time is one of those other ideas seasonal time, daily time that causes plants to uh, react in certain ways. So hopefully that helps you with um, your preparations for next Thursday sack. We'll be busy before that happens. So enjoy the weekend as much as you get of it, and uh, I'll see you Monday.